How many people have fell in love with the pen tool last class? No, kind of. Kind of. Okay. So we're going to use the pen tool this time to cut out the donut. Now we're going to need to do something with this that we didn't need to do last week, and that is intentionally put two subpaths on one path layer. Imagine this is going into the, um, the Metro catalog. You know, they're doing a, a sale on strawberry donuts. So you start the pen tool, you work your way all the way around the outside there, you come back to where you started, and then you send the file off. And they've, you know, they've got their clipping path there, and they send it into InDesign. They tell it to use the clipping path, and the background goes transparent. But what do they see in the middle there? Whatever that is, or is that, a, that looks like a pancake or something. Anyway, they see whatever that is. So that's no good. Uh, so let's start cutting around the outside. Once we come back to where we started, remember when you're making a path, you'll click, you'll click and drag to get those little handles. If you hold down the command key, you'll get that little white cursor arrow and you can drag those handles around. If you need to break an arm, you hold down the option key and pull those little handles around. And we're gonna work all the way around until we come back to where we started. That'll close the path, and then we'll talk about the inner part. So remember with the pen tool, when you first start, you see that little asterisk, that little snowflake icon beside it. That means that it's going to start a new path. And if we go over to our paths panel, make this visible, as soon as I click, you see it creates a work path. Now, a work path, is that something that is stable and will always be there? No, if I, let's say I, I got all the way around, I cut out this donut, and then I clicked off the path, and then I started making another path, the inner path, look what happens huh, to my work path. It disappears. So in order to keep that permanent, give it a name, like uh, you know, Larry or Richard or Donut. So let's say I'm going to go around, see this like, looks like Alfred Hitchcock's nose? I'm going to start down here, and I work my way up here, do a click and a drag, get that curve, go up here, get a click and a drag, got that curve, and then I say, okay, I want to go around this little nose here, so I'll click up here, and I'll pull this way, uh-oh, yeah, well here's the thing, this point actually has two handles attached to it, one goes out this direction, one goes out this direction, we don't see this one, because we only have this point selected, which is connected to this line, which only has these handles connected to it. But if I select this point back here, and what tool do I need to select this point? Command. That's the direct select tool. And when I click on this point, I can see those two handles. So I say, okay, well I want this little line here. Remember we said think of this as a cannon firing a cannonball towards here, but it's being affected by the gravity of this one and that handle. So it fires the cannonball towards this, goes boom, whoa, over this direction. We want it to fire the cannonball out this way. So I'm gonna grab this handle and pull it out this way which will work just fine for the line going around the nose. But now this one swung out the wrong direction. That's the problem with having these connected. Now, the upside is it does always make a graceful curve around here, but we don't want a curve in this point. We want a hard bend. So I'm gonna hold down the option key. And at first it looks like nothing happened. But when I hover over this handle, look at what the tool turns into. That's the convert point tool. So I'll convert this from a handle that's connected to the one over here to one that's its own person, it's its own handle. It can do what it wants in the world. And if I need to change the length of a handle, like this long handle here is causing this line to swoop too far out from the nose. So I'll shorten this handle. I'll hold down the command key, grab this end point, and shorten that handle up. And then I can continue. Oops, except that handle's too long. There we go. I can continue around. Now, if you were doing some other work and you came back to your path and realized that, uh-oh, you see that snowflake icon again, what does that mean? It's gonna start a new subpath. It won't be connected with this last point here. Watch this, if I start using the pen tool up here, oops, I've got a big gap between here and here because this line and this line are not connected. So when you see that snowflake, here's what you gotta do. Uh-oh, snowflake. Well, there's my last point. I'm gonna hover over it, and when I hover, see that chain link icon? When I click, boink, I've reestablished my connection with that path. And then I can go back and continue around. And again, we're just going for the general curves of the donut. Don't worry about trying to get every teeny tiny little crummy bit.
So like I said, once you get all the way around to where you started, when you just hover your cursor over the first point that you created, you'll see that little circle icon. And when you click, that'll close off the path. And if you look in your paths panel, hopefully you'll see something like this. I've got a gray panel and the donut is highlighted in white. So that's telling me that if I were to load this as a selection, or if they were to use that clipping path to isolate transparency, everything around the outside would be lost, whatever's on the inside would be kept. Unfortunately, right now, that also includes this inner part of the donut. So because we've closed this off, we go back to our little snowflake icon, we've finished this path, let's move to the inside and cut out the inner part. And again, don't get too hung up on every little crevice, just follow the general curves of it. And if you're going to err on the side of something, err on the side of the donut, keep a bit of the donut, if anything, rather than going on the outside and getting a bit of the background in there. And hopefully, as you're cutting out that center part of the donut, it will be turning gray, indicating it won't be part of the selection. If it's coming in white, like instead of being a gray circle here, if it's white, if you select the path, and from these little pop-up up here, we've got things like combine shape, subtract front shape, try exclude or subtract, or some of these different combinations, and see if that middle part goes gray. When you get into these subpaths, it can get a little complex, because they're, they're kind of considered as being on different layers, like uh, within the paths panel. You can change what layers they're on, you can change how they interact with each other, and that's what we're aiming for. Okay, so once you've got those paths, let's talk about how these can be used. We have one path layer and two subpaths on it. This one is being identified as an outer path, which means everything outside of it is being removed. This is an inner path, everything on the inside of it is being removed. What's left is the donut. Now here's the thing. We can have one, two, or none of these individual paths selected. Right now, I can see the points on this inner path, so this one is more selected than the other one. I mean, they're both on this layer, this work path. Oh, geez, it's still a work path layer. Hang on a sec. I'm gonna name this. Donut. And when this inner one here is highlighted, you can see I see the little dotted lines around it, it's more selected than this outer one. So if I were to load this up as a selection, and at the bottom of the layers panel, let me move this up so you guys can see it a bit better. At the bottom of the paths panel, we've got this little dotted circle. And watch what happens if I click this. It took that inner path and loaded it as a selection. And because it's gray, it means it's not selected, which means it selects everything except this inner path. So if they were to use this, they would get the background, this part, uh-oh. So let me deselect that, and let me select this outer path. So I'm gonna hold down the command key, I'm gonna click on this outer path, and now I can see the points around this outer path. But notice I don't see the points on this inner path. So if I load this as a selection, I get the donut selected, including the hole, because this outer path has white on the inside. In order to get it to load up properly with the donut selected and not the hole, I need to either have both of these layers selected, both of these paths, and I could do that by holding the shift key in addition to the command key, or even easier, if I click off this path, notice nothing is selected now, and if I click back onto the path, I can see both of these paths, but neither of them has their points selected. And since neither is more selected than the other, we will get exactly what we see here. If I click the load as selection icon, there it is. So it's a little bit of a roundabout way, but basically you're just identifying which of these you want it to load up. If you select this one, it loads it. If you select this one, it loads it. If you select neither, it says, well, I'll just do all of them together, and there's your selection. So once you've got that donut selected, Make sure you have that background layer selected. And we'll choose Edit, Copy. Then we can pop over to the layer mask where the flower is, and we'll just paste it in. Edit, paste. Uh, when you're in your layer path, click the layer, the background layer. So if you have this layer selected, because we turned off the eyeball on the flower, when we go to Copy, it says, wait a minute, there's, there's nothing on this layer for us to copy. Like the, the layer that we have selected, its eyeball is turned off, there's nothing there. Instead, click on the background layer, make it yeah. highlighted. And then when we go under edit, you should see a copy option. Just paste yeah, just hit paste. And then you have a flower and a donut hanging out together. So you should have a flower and a donut hanging out together like they've been friends their whole lives. 
And once you deselect and turn back on the flower, you should have a donut with a beautiful little ornamental and edible, I might add, orchid.